So in today's video, I'm going to be explaining the backstory of Rhino. With the third episode of Attack on Titan Season 4, we get more insight into the past of Rhino and what fueled him to become a warrior. His origins growing up in Mali, just everything really. Now, before we get into the video, if you haven't checked out my last Attack on Titan video on the channel, make sure to go check it out. In that video, I went over everything you need to know about Mali in this final season of Attack on Titan, since a lot of people didn't actually understand what was going on. And last but not least, if you are new to the channel, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you want to see more Attack on Titan videos. There was really good reception on the last video, so I'll be sure to keep dropping Attack on Titan content as long as you guys want to see it. And also, feel free to recommend any certain video topics you want me to cover for Season 4. However, that's all from me. Let's get right into the video. Rana was born in the Liberio internment zone in Mali to his Eldian mother Karina Brown and his Malian father whose name is unknown. As Rana was an Eldian growing up in Mali, naturally he like all the others grew up to have hatred for the Eldians who reside in paradise. And for Eldians who live in Mali, it's very natural for them to wish to become warriors and gain the title honorary Malians to protect their families from becoming titan weaponry or just have a little bit of a better life in the terrible situation they're already facing being Eldians who live in Mali. Rhino was the same, although I guess you could say there was a slight difference in his motivation to become an honorary Marlian. When Rhino was growing up, he was sitting on his mother's lap and she was explaining more about Rhino's ancestry and why he didn't have his father around. She said that the reason that the Eldians who live in Mali are treated the way they are and are being caged up in these internment zones is because in their veins they have the blood of devils who once did very bad things and for this reason they are being punished. Obviously, she's saying this in reference to the acts of the Eldians which were conducted under King Fritz and the way that they treated other races including Mali during their 1700 year reign. Furthermore, she says it's because of their heritage that Rhino's father isn't present in his life, because he's Malian and it's against the rules for a Malian to have a child with an Eldian. She then proceeds to tell Rhino that this is the secret between the two of them and tears fall down her face as she says if only you were born to a Malian. Motivated by his mother's words and her tears, Rana sets his mind on becoming a warrior so he can become a Malian with his mother, which would then allow them to live together with his father. Essentially, Rana is doing all this to help his mother's dream become a reality, which is very admirable taking into account the harsh path of becoming a warrior. We then see Rana taking part in the testing system to become a warrior candidate, amongst dozens of other Eldians. And throughout the test, we see Rana trying his hardest, although he's just falling short to pass behind the other warriors which we are already familiar with. We see Rana come second to Marcel Gadiard in a race through terrible conditions while holding guns, and then Berthold winning in a sharpshooting drill and Annie winning in a basic combat drill, all of them passing ahead of Rana. The last thing that we see is Rana doing a written test, which is what actually enabled him to become a warrior candidate, through his sense of loyalty to Mali which he made evidently clear through his written tests. After passing the test and becoming a warrior candidate, Rana then hugs his mother and tells her the good news, while she sheds tears saying we're only one step away from becoming honorary Marlians. In his mother's embrace, Rana then says I promise I'll inherit one of the nine titans. We then see all of the warrior candidates during training, and Zeke who at the time hasn't inherited the beast titan, says to the younger candidates being Rana, Berto, Annie, Peak, Porco and Marcel, that Marley has been prepping to attack Paradise in the next few years and that the time for them to inherit the Nine Titans has come. In the heat of the moment and realising that he's so close to achieving his dream of finally becoming an honorary Marlian, Rhino says out loud he can finally become a Marlian. However, being very quick to rain on Rhino's parade, Porco says Rhino hasn't accomplished anything yet and that he's easily the weakest out of the seven candidates and only six Titans are being inherited. And what he was saying was the truth. Rana didn't necessarily exceed in specific areas like the rest of the candidates, he wasn't strong all around like Marcel, or smart like Peak, or a good shooter like Berto, or a good fighter like Annie. Coco quickly followed up by saying that all Rana had was the loyalty he showed in the written test, while throwing in comments that he was a bootlicker and made sure to suck up to the captain every single day. Obviously frustrated at the words of Porco, Rana quickly questions Porco and accuses him of being an Eldian restorationist who supports King Fritz, which causes both of them to fight, with Marcel removing his brother Porco from the situation and apologising to Rana. After becoming a warrior and inheriting the armoured titan, Rana visits the barracks where his mother and father met. After seeing the man who was there and thinking that he could be his father, Rana explained how hard he worked to become a warrior and now that he and his mother are honorary Marlians, they could live together. However, his father wasn't anywhere near as excited as Rhino and he definitely didn't share the same dream as Rhino's mother. 
He lashed out at Rainer saying he and his mother were devils trying to get revenge on him and get him hanged. Because if they were to look into their bloodline, they found out that Eldian had a child with Amalian, which is illegal. Rainer's father then ran away from him and Rainer decided that he doesn't need a father, he's the warrior entrusted with the armor titan and he will become a hero who saves the world. Now, let me clear up the reason as to why Rainer truly received the armor titan. Was his loyalty actually the most valuable trait amongst all the candidates? Was he just lucky? Or maybe he was just way stronger than he actually thought? Well, the real reason that Rainer received the armor titan was because Marcel was bad mouthing his brother Porco and making Rainer look better in the eyes of the army, therefore influencing their decision when choosing the warriors. This is because Marcel wanted to protect his brother and have him live a long life. But despite this, he realized how wrong he was for interfering with Rainer's effort and he knew how this information would crush him, which is why he was constantly apologizing to Rainer. Marcel later revealed this fact to him when him, Rainer, Berthold and Annie were sent to retrieve the founding titan from Paradis. Obviously Rainer couldn't believe it and doubted Marcel's words and amidst all the tension, Rainer didn't notice the pure titan behind him which was Ymir, which is when we get this scene from season 2 where Marcel saved Rainer which led to him getting eaten by Ymir and losing the jaw titan. Shocked at everything that had just transpired, Rainer flees from Ymir and Berthold and Annie give chase not knowing what to do either. After losing Marcel on the Jaw Titan, Berto and Annie suggest that they go back to Mali and explain the situation. But obviously, Rainer, who is at fault for this situation, will likely have the Armor Titan taken away from him and he will be eaten. Desperate to survive and to produce results, Rainer says everything imaginable to convince the other two that they should continue the mission and retrieve the founder, while he declares that Rainer is dead and if you need Marcel, I'll be Marcel. And this is where Rainer adopts his whole reliable composed leadership like persona which we see throughout this series in an attempt to be like Marcel. Shortly after deciding that they will continue the mission, Berto and Rainer are riding on Annie's female titan coming close to War Maria. Annie uses her scream as the female titan to call surrounding pure titans to the area so when Berto destroys the gate, they can use the chaos and confusion of the titans coming in to blend in with the residents of Paradis. Once Berto breaks the gate, Rainer climbs up the wall to keep Berto and Annie away from the incoming titan attack and after making sure they're safe, he charges at the inner wall saying to himself he wanted to grant his mother's wish to live with his father but those feelings weren't reciprocated. His mother's dream wouldn't ever come true. He wasn't even supposed to become a warrior and he wasn't even supposed to survive past today. But he won't let things end here because he hasn't changed anything yet as he destroys the wall. After this we have Ryan and the others infiltrating humanity inside the walls and being in one of the camps for refugees. In here Ryan makes a promise to Annie and Berthold to be a true warrior and we then just have a brief period of time where they are learning things about Paradis. And after time realizing that King Fritz was nothing but a fraud, they want to find a way to infiltrate the true royal family of the walls and after discussing between themselves, Ryan suggests that they become soldiers and infiltrate the military police to get the information that they need. But Annie is kind of against the idea since they've already been in paradise for 2 years and they only have 10 years left to live. Playing soldier isn't really what they should be doing. However, Rainer says that the threat of the founding titan is too great that even though they never showed themselves after the wars fell, due to the vow to renounce war, Rainer doesn't want to risk trying to just make haste and destroying the other walls. Because if the founding titan does show up, one scream is all it takes for the end of humanity. Rainer then says that all they can do is march forward slowly and we see him sometime later at the training camp being questioned by Keith Shadies as to what his goal is being here, to which he says to save humanity. But that's it for the backstory of Rhino, there are some parts I didn't include because it was just the same thing over again and stuff we've already been told before, but for his backstory this is really everything you most likely didn't know and need to know. And I think this just gives people way more insight onto how great of a character Rhino is and how we've really seen different perspectives to him throughout the entirety of Attack on Titan. But let me know what you guys think of Rana down below, especially after hearing his backstory. So if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Attack on Titan videos. Also, share the video if you want to help me out further. And last but not least, check out the links below, Patreon, Twitter, Instagram, everything's there in regards to my socials and keeping up with me outside of YouTube. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.